Deputations, under Standing Order 3.19, and uh, we have received uh, two deputations, um, and the first one is based on item 12.2, report from the Hagley Ferrymead Community Board, uh, Christchurch Netball Centre, uh, fencing at South Hagley Park. And I'd like to um, invite, uh, is it Cathy, Cathy, yeah, Cathy Rodder and Megan Maclay. Yep, so that's an addition. From the Christchurch Netball Centre. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So you've got um, 10 minutes to uh, present um, uh, to us, but uh, within that time frame, uh, uh, councillors would like an opportunity to be able to ask questions. So if you could just, um, you know, keep your points in, in, in the context of that. So if we get to 10 minutes, then there won't be time for questions. So thank you. Thank you very much. Christchurch Netball now has a million dollar asset following refurbishment and repositioning of 18 high quality deco turf netball courts in Hagley Park. We need to be able to protect this asset. Increased vandalism has occurred since late 2011. In 2013, repairs to damaged courts totaled $9,760. Repairs to damaged spectator seats totaled $3,000. Theft of goalpost, goalpost protector padding, hoops and nets is estimated to cost approximately 1,200 per year, almost 14,000 in one year. Already this year, intentional court damage has occurred and the estimate received for repairs is $2,083. And we've also been required to dispose of some spectator seats damaged beyond repair. We believe we are guardians of the park space in South Hagley and we do take this responsibility seriously. Areas around the building had in years past been intermittently maintained by council, now just the usual mowing and some at request tree trimming. Christchurch Netball now maintains at their own cost car park hedges, car park gardens, driveway gardens, gardens and planter boxes courtside, grass edges that encroach onto the sealed court surfaces, and has, with council permission, planted donated daff daffodil bulbs in the grassed area outside the front entrance to beautify. Court space is used by netballers, basketballers, fitness groups, skateboarders, constantly, rollerbladers, some playing versions of roller hockey, scooter users, usually learners, cyclists, some incidents of commuter cyclists weaving around the seats, goalposts and sometimes spectators as they cross the area. Marching groups, kite flyers, family and social group activities. There is absolutely no intention to prevent those activities. These can continue outside the fenced area. There is plenty of space. 16 courts with open public access will be available 24-7. We wish to erect an aesthetically pleasing and non-invasive netting fence, as per agreed specifications, around the area of new courts to link to existing Council Hagley Park fences. Design and colour will lessen the impact of a fence in the area. This would be similar or the same as those fences already erected around the tennis courts, the croquet grounds and bowls greens in Hagley Park. At no cost to Council, we need to protect our substantial uninsurable assets to protect refurbished spectator seating, to reduce the damage theft of goalposts, goalpost padding, hoops and nets, to ensure safety and protection of players, especially at night trainings and to reduce the amount of mud walked onto the courts by players crossing the wet grassed area from Hagley Avenue, thereby reducing court cleaning and ongoing maintenance costs. Christchurch Netball is prepared to contribute to plantings and or planter boxes inside the perimeter of the roadside fence to soften the fence line, should this be required. We're mindful of the public's concerns regarding Hagley Park. As a result of the recent cricket debate, we held back this application to fence. Discussions had initially started with council staff early in 2012. This delay has now resulted in a considerable amount of unbudgeted funds being used to maintain and repair our property in the intervening period. We would prefer this matter did not go to public consultation and create issues and debates by a small group of self-appointed protectors of Hagley Park. We believe the building and courts themselves could become a target for graffiti and potential damage as a result of increased public attention. We've spoken to club representatives and players at various forums to gauge their thoughts on this proposal, and we've been met with 100% in favour of submitting an application to Council for offence. Our club members are proud of the refurbished courts and the building. The fact that Netball was able to be provided for 6,000 plus people in April 2011, in time for the commencement of the season, has seen a renewed interest in the game in Christchurch. This kept adults, teenagers, children and families busy, active and involved in sport during difficult post-earthquake times. 
Netball is a sport that is affordable for young children, secondary students, mums and their families, and is the most played women's sport in, in Canterbury. If we are required to continue paying high maintenance costs on uninsurable assets, it is inevitable that the cost to players will increase to cover the cost of repairs as a result of vandalism. We believe we have rights under Section 224 of the Property Law Act, and considering the large investment the centre has made in the new courts, we believe our request is reasonable. We need a fence, and we need it now. Thank you. Has, um, have, has anyone got any questions? Phil Clearwater. Thank you for your presentation. Can I just ask you, in terms of alternate ways to deal with the vandalism, what sort of approaches might have been made to either, say, the police or any of the community policing organisations? We have spoken to police. I've had to trespass somebody from Hagley Park. Um, we've had um, squatters sleeping in the doorway, those sort of things, but there's very little that they can do in terms of, t of their time. And, and the community... And we have security. The community patrols? Was there any contact with them? I'm just wondering what sort of what other alternatives you've looked at to prevent this happening. We've spoken. I've spoken to a community policeman when we were having issues with um, somebody wandering around the park. But no, not really. That's probably an avenue we need to explore. Follow the councillor Phil Clearwater question. Based on your the uh, the history, has any the you know the or how many times? Regarding to the neighbour, the, uh, the facility has been, uh, you know, suffered this kind of vandalism before, and also this time is after the uh, refurbish, you know, resurface, etc. Which particular part of this new facility you you have particular concern will be affected by the the vandalism? The new court surface is a deco turf surface that's slightly rubberized, which is much better and safer for our players, yes. but it is more vulnerable to damage from rollerbladers, skateboarders, bikes, those sort of things. Not to the extent it's happening now. We're finding that with the growth in Addington, we're getting a lot more attention than perhaps we had in the past. Jamie Goff. Thank you very much. Thanks for your uh, deputation. Um, just wondering, I've gone through the report obviously, and I, um, I just haven't been able to find this figure here, so hoping you might be able to help me. I see that you were granted a 33 year lease um, from about 93. Oh, I guess 33 it is. Um, and just wondering, what, um, what rent do you pay for that? And just wondering if you can't comment necessarily on that, um, you, how, how much? Yeah, I couldn't find it there. How much is the rent? Oh, great. Okay. Oh, thank you very much. What page is that? Uh, no, no, that's fine. Well, then, um, and just then wondering if you're in a position to comment how that would relate to a market rental if you were leasing the, uh, that, that premises on private land. I have no idea. Sorry. Okay. No, that's fine. But we wouldn't... Uh, thank you for your deputation. Um, I'm, I'm taking it the, um, the, the fencing proposals as per the, in the document that you gave Councillor Paul Lonsdale who issued to, it's, it's basically you're looking at doing half the courts and when you really look at it, about a third of that's already fenced anyway, isn't it? According to this, so this here, uh, it's, I know the frustration you must feel. I mean, it's a, a hard area to, area to secure as any area li like that, and any it seems that anything you try and do is post the damage, so you're always behind the eight ball and repairing. And I, I, it's always, I suppose, a um, a burden on any club financially, and, it, and obviously netball, and it's particularly this area is the main area in Christchurch for netball. And it is, as you say, the largest um, sport played by women in Canterbury. So it is an important asset. So thank you. Sorry, it's in the body of the lease. So it's on um, page 62 of our report. At the very outset, it says that the, um, the lease agreement is for an annual rental of 1,300 payable half yearly in advance on the 1st of October and 1st of April. So that hasn't changed since the lease was signed. Is that right? 
There was a reduction in 2011, I believe, 2012. Slight reduction. Right. So as a result of the earthquake damage. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Are there any other questions? Uh, Paul Lonsdale, Yanni. I'm just looking in the lease uh, agreement, and I, I, I do see, and I just, I'd, I'd like to get some clarification from, uh, from perhaps our legal advisors on. Uh, to me, it sort of almost indicates they could erect to uh, uh, keep people from uh, misusing the area uh, under, um, I think it's five, who acts contrary to any of the rules for the conduct of persons using the premises, providing provided that any omission or failure to observe such rules. Uh, made in good faith, and if any such person offended and complies with the rules and attention be drawn, shall not be deemed to be reasonable uh, for his removal or expul ex expulsion. Then it goes on to saying uh, enforcing the rules or preserving the proper management and pres preservation of the premises. And I think that's the part uh, that I'd like a bit of clarification on. And are they able to actually erect a fence without a consultation? under that clause. The, um, if you refer to page 62, um, which is... Uh, 64, I think, I think, on the... No, uh, but if you look at 62, um, paragraph 5b, no buildings, fences or other structure, structures shall be erected, nor shall alterations or additions be made to an existing building, fence or structure without the prior consent of the said parks manager. Yep, the yep, reason yep. this is here in front of the council is because the... Um, there was not a proper delegation given to the parks manager. Mm. If a proper delegation, in accordance with the intention of this lease, had been granted, this decision would have been made by the parks manager and based on the advice that we've received as a council, that lease, um, that permission would have been granted so that the asset could have been protected. Yes, this is sort of contrary, that particular clause is contrary to that. Yeah, we brought it here. Yeah, that's, that's right. I mean, we, we there is not a proper deputy. No, there, there was not a sufficient delegation for council staff to be satisfied that they could um, meet the intent of the lease because the delegation was not appropriately given to the parks um, manager who's no longer called a parks manager. Okay, yep. Yani? Um, Thank you. Um, just and I'm going to let you go over time because I've prattled and I shouldn't have. So. Just um, in the letter to John Allen on the 17th of April, you talk about the issue of not being able to insure it because it's in a public area. Did, did you take that into account? You know, I'm just trying to understand how we've got to a situation where you've had this major investment without understanding whether you could get insurance or have the fencing put in to protect the asset. Why, why is it being done? It seems kind of around the wrong way. Insured by council as it's council land, and we found out that was not the case. Um, we knew we couldn't insure the courts, but we are committed to providing quality courts for our players and safe courts. What I'm just trying to understand in terms of like the request for fencing, mm. why would that have not come before the money was spent on doing the enhancements given? You couldn't get insurance. Didn't have the vandalism, really. Well, we, we weren't being subjected to the vandalism we're being subjected to now, and we did start discussions with council staff in 2012 right. about fencing the courts. And just a, a second question um, in regards to the long-term future. Are, are you um, looking at any sort of indoor facilities, or I don't know if you've had a briefing on the Metro Sports facility. Yes. Do, do you see that there would be a time when you would actually have uh, more activity in a different location and therefore, you know, if the fencing was granted, whether that could be on a kind of transitional period um, to enable, you know, the, I guess that future relocation to a more suitable venue. With the number of people that play netball in Christchurch, when you take into consideration our Saturday sport plus primary, secondary and intermediate netball as well, the Metropolitan Sports Facility will not cope with those with all those numbers. So th th there will always be netball played outside in Hackley Park, as far as we're aware. There is no other option. There are there any further questions? Oh, no, we've reached our time anyway. So, look, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much for your um, deputation. And now I would like to um, invite.